For years, I've told junior software engineers that they should learn to write software tests. To be a QA engineer, though not required, it really gives you an advantage to learn to write what are called end-to-end -end tests with an automation tool like Cypress or Selenium. This is Cypress. This is Selenium. There, these are different from unit tests, which directly test APIs or other functions software engineers wrote. Most QA engineers test software manually. That means they click through a website or a mobile app by hand, enter text, click drop-down boxes and buttons all by hand. End-to-end -end testing automates this whole process. With Cypress or Selenium, you may automate a person clicking through a browser. QA engineers who know Cypress or Selenium have an advantage in the job market. Today, I'll show you how to set up Cypress, write some simple tests, write code to go to Domino's Pizza's website, pick a store in New York, New York City, build your pep own pepperoni pizza with cheese, then add it to a shopping cart. Then I'll check if the cart says the right words. My code is on GitHub right here at this address. And you can see this video of my code in action. See there, it's going to Domino's site. It picked a carryout order, picked uh, a store in New York, added pepperoni, so on. Done. It's in the shopping cart. Um, last week, I showed you on LinkedIn how I use Selenium to automatically click through my LinkedIn followers to check if they're fake. LinkedIn actually suspended my account for eight hours for doing this, so you may not want to copy me. So I'm making a QA folder. Now I'm doing, I'm installing Cypress, which is a NPM package. On the left side, I have the Cypress tutorial. First, I can open up a mock browser by using this command. So this creates what's called a headless browser. I want to do end-to-end -end testing. I pick that. Um, you can see some of the configuration files here. I'll pick my browser, Chrome. Let's start end-to-end -end testing in Chrome. So the documentation is amazing and they make it super, super easy. Let's create a new spec here. You can see the very first uh, test that they've given you. If you know Jest or any other test frameworks, this is very similar. Mocha Chai. Uh, you can see this command basically tells Cypress to visit this website, example.cypress.io. Okay, let's just run it. It just basically very simply loads the website, the Cypress website, which has, uh, it's, it's just called kitchen sink and just has a bunch of documentation and links. You see the API calls it's making and on the right side, I'm going to open up VS Code and show you what's going on. So inside the Cypress E to E directory for end-to-end -end testing, you see the sample code they just gave us have a, a command called describe. It, it means like a block of tests. Usually you have the word describe with a comment and then each test can start with the word it. And then this is another comment. So again, this is just testing. This is like one of the simplest tests possible. Now all it's doing is just loading this website. Let's let's write our first end-to-end -end test. Uh, let's check this simple example. Uh, this first test, all it does is it just checks expects true to equal true, which should give you true. And you can see as soon as I save this file, this headless browser, which we have automatically runs and reacts. It's really cool. So you can see it says assert expected true to equal true. It's green. It means the test passed. That's the simplest test you can ever have. If I say expect true to equal false, this of course is going to fail, right? Because true doesn't equal false. But if I save it, you see, it'll say it'll be red and it'll say the test failed. More. Let's like write a real test. 
So let's visit a page, which is this kitchen sink page I showed you earlier. I'm going to get rid of this. I'm going to uncomment the previous code we have. Actually, I'll just steal this code here. Uh, it goes back to that kitchen sink page, which is example cypress.io. So again, if I save that, you notice the headless browser goes to the kitchen sink page and which has a bunch of links on it. And let's see if it has the text called type. And there's a, there's a link on here called type, this one right here. See? So let's check that out. So you see it's very self-explanatory. It's almost like plain English. So that's why I tell people you can actually learn the basics of Cypress in a day. It's not that hard. It does check. It, you get a green that that text example in this website does have the word type in it. If I looked for something else, like you know, let's say type one, this is going to give me a false because there is no type one. All right, so this will be red. See? Go to if we find that type element, that type link, let's automatically click on it with the click command and check that check out what just happened it just clicked on the link type and now went to a different page these are all cypress commands cypress functions now let's make an assertion uh, let's test that the url um, that we just went to after after clicking on the type link let's test that the url has certain text in the actual url here so I'm going to test that it should uh, include uh, commands slash actions. And yes, it you see the URL has those uh, that text in it. So that passed. Sweet. OK. Um, and you can see there's a lot more stuff that we can add. It's pizza test code. So going to Domino's site, um, I started this describe and it block here. We go to the restaurants page, which is what the first line does. Next step is to click on carry out. Let's right click on the carry out, carry out icon, click inspect, uh, and take a look at the HTML. You notice it's connected to this input tag and um, this has a unique ID in the HTML called carryout. So we can use Cypress to go there directly. We can say sci.get um, carryout. However, in uh, getting this component, there are two rules. Um, to get an ID, you use a hash hashtag um, to get a class value you use a period let's actually click on it so if I save this let's see what happens so you can see it loaded the page now it's it's clicked on carry out that so how do I go to city same thing let's inspect the city area uh, the ID for that is city that's the unique ID so let's say sci.get, uh, again, hashtag city, capital. And then uh, let's, uh, now let's actually fill in what's in there uh, with, with the word New York. So you can use the type command and say New York. See, now it's it gets filled up with the word New York. Now I need to go to the state and pick California from this drop-down box. Let's inspect again. Let's find the unique identifier. Uh, inspect. And this looks like it's a, it's a region. And you see there are these drop-down boxes. So how do you select from a drop-down box? You go sci.get. Again, it's an ID region with a hashtag. And then you use the select command to pick from a drop down box. You want to pick the state New York. There you go. See, New York is selected. Now, how do I click find a store? So let's right click on that. Uh, there's a submit button. And uh, this is a little bit complicated and trickier. There are many ways you can uh, 
pick an element. I experimented a lot and failed several times to go by this class name. So let's say uh, sci.get a class name. Remember a class, uh, when you want to get a class, you start with a period. Say let's try to, let's try to get it. Let's see what happens. Name like this. Um, it seems to it seems to grab on to the button. I'm not sure if it really is, but let's try to click on the button, right? Let's see if this really clicks find a store. What happens? Oops, check out the error message. So sci.click can only be called on a single element, but your subject contained five elements. That class name is not unique. So if I search for that, I can do a, a command F and search for this class name. You notice it actually appears five times in this HTML. Um, so I need a unique way to identify this one button. The very first time this class name appears is the actual button find a store. It's the, the very first one here. And so um, if I say site I get, it actually returns an array of HTML elements. To get only the first one, I can use the command first, or I can use uh, the EQ command with an index, like an array index. And I can say the first element EQ zero, uh, get that one, that first HTML element with that class name and click on that. Oh my God, super cool, right? So now it's returned a bunch of stores in New York. I won't go into detail into how I grab the second store, but this is the code. Uh, basically, I look for this class. You notice it's the second store. So my index here is the second index. And if I run that, I basically get this, which is at 148th West 72nd Street. I need to build your own pizza here using the build your js build your own pizza class basically you see the class is super long you don't need to use the entire class name you can just pick one of the elements that looks unique i need to uh, pick the cheese i pick uh, light cheese i'll pick um, extra tomato sauce i'll pick pepperoni and then i'll add to the order so then it'll get in the shopping cart um, similarly you know, again, it's the same same old trick here. Finding the finding the unique finding the unique class. I get site nav toggle cart, and from here, when I click on it, this cart will pop up. So what I want to do is check the text inside that pop up for the words large fourteen inch hand tossed pizza. Again, I right right click on it using the same trick. Uh, I'm looking for the class button link outline offset. That's it, guys. So go to my GitHub page uh, to read my code and to watch a video of the whole thing. Take care. Have lots of fun playing with Cypress.